In this video, I'm going to show you the possible custom inputs or helpers in Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit subscribe below so you don't miss out on future videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and in this video we're going to look at custom inputs, also known as helpers in Home Assistant. We're going to look at the different types of inputs and some possible uses for them. So let's get going. There are five main types of custom inputs, and you can find them on the Home Assistant website under Integrations, under Automations. You can use these to trigger things in Home Assistant, or control things, or set values, or something like that. Whether it's triggering a scene using an input boolean, or selecting a room using an input select. We'll have a look at all of these and see what we can do with them. They're basically just a way of triggering something or setting a state of something manually, or with an automation, and using it to then recall it and then trigger something else later on. Let's start off with an input boolean. Now this is probably the most common one, or at least the one that you're going to create the most of. This is basically just a switch. And as it stands, when you create it, it's a switch that does nothing but you can use that switch to trigger an automation. Or you can use a call service to toggle or to set the state of that switch. I use Oompa Booleans as an override for all my automations or as a trigger for my scenes. So let's head over to our config file to create one. As you can see, my input Booleans, as well as my other inputs, are referenced in separate files. So let's head over to that file now. So in the input booleans file, to add a new one, we just give it a name, we give it a friendly name, and we give it an icon. We can also give it an initial. An initial value is basically the value that it will revert to when Home Assistant restarts. For my scenes, I have this initial value set to off. That means I can't accidentally trigger some scenes when I restart Home Assistant. Otherwise, all sorts of things will be happening at once and they'll all clash. Whereas with my automations, I don't include a value in there. I just leave initial out of the question. That means that when Home Assistant restarts, it will just resort to the last value that Home Assistant recalls that that input boolean was at. Let's dive into Node Red where we can see it in action. This is my automation for overnight kitchen lights. As you can see, there's a current state node near the start of the flow. So the flow is triggered by the light scheduler when it hits a certain time it'll trigger the flow. It'll then go into the current state node. This is where it checks the value of the input boolean for my override. If the input boolean is on, then it will continue down the flow and trigger whatever it's meant to trigger in the automation. Whereas if the input boolean is off, it won't go anywhere and it won't do anything. This just gives me an override to my automation so I can just stop it from happening. We can also use it to trigger a flow. If we use an event state node and then set the entity ID to our input boolean, then when the input boolean is on, then the flow will trigger. If it's off, it won't trigger. Moving on, we have the input number. This is basically where you have a slider and you can select a number on that slider. I'm using mine for a heating boost, where I select the duration of my heating boost within quarter of an hour increments. To set this up, you add it in the same way. You give it a name, then you give it a minimum value, a maximum value, and a step value. So for my heating boost, it's going from 0 to 5, with intervals of 0.25, i.e. quarter of an hour. Next up, we have input select. This basically gives you a drop-down list of predefined options. Again, I'm using mine for my heating boost, but this time to select the room I want to boost. To set it up, you give it a name, a friendly name, you can give it an icon if you want, and an initial, and then you give the options. This is just the list of all the options you want. So for me, it's the list of all the rooms. Now we can jump over to Node Red to see it in action. I'm using a call service for each of the two inputs. So once the flow is triggered by the input boolean, it'll then pass through these, and then I merge those into one signal to carry on down the rest of the flow. Next up, we have input date time. This is used to select the date or time. To set them up, you give it a name, a friendly name, and then you can either have it to select the date, the time, or both by setting the conditions to true or false. I don't use it myself, but you can see how you might want to use it 
to trigger an alarm, or maybe even to set a kid's bedtime. You can run an automation at a given time using the input date time. This might be useful if you have a condition or you want to run something at a certain time, but that time often changes. So the input date time gives you a way to edit that time in the front end or in your Lovelace. The last form of input is an input text. Now I'm not entirely sure what you could use this for, but you can use it to trigger an automation using a password. Or maybe if you give a certain response, it'll do a certain thing, maybe with that response or based on that response. To set this up, I'm going to do something slightly differently because there are actually two ways to create helpers in Home Assistant. I've been showing you how to do it in the YAML. This time we're going to see how to do it in the front end under the helpers section of our configuration page. So we head over to our configuration page. We click on helpers and we can see all the helpers we've made. Now if we click on the plus, it'll let us add a new helper. This is going to be an input text. In here we can give it a name and an icon. We can also set a minimum and maximum length of the text. We can also select whether it's going to be a password or not. This won't actually encrypt the text at all, but it will obscure it whilst you're writing it, so it will give you the dots rather than the actual letters you're writing. You can create helpers using either method, the YAML or the configurator. It doesn't matter which one you use, but if you create in the YAML, you can't edit in the configurator, and vice versa. Now there are a couple of other integrations I want to touch on. They aren't technically helpers directly, but they do help with your automations. We've got the counter and the timer. Both of these are very useful. Let's start with the counter. As with everything else, it's fairly easy to set up. You start with a step, an initial, a minimum and a maximum. You can then call a service to increment or decrement decrease, the count or to reset it. You might want to use this to keep stock of stuff, maybe like dishwasher tablets. You could set an automation where every time the dishwasher turns on, your counter increases by one. Now the timer could be useful to trigger a timer for something. Perhaps every so often you want a 15 minute timer whilst you're on a break and at the end of that 15 minutes you want it to announce that you need to get back to work. Personally I don't use this, I prefer to use a delay node inside of Node Red. I feel like it's better to have the timer integrated into the flow. You can also use a counter node inside Node Red, so it can count how many times you've done a certain loop, for example. But I think there's a place for the counter integration as well, because the counter node is only going to be relevant inside a single flow inside Node Red, whereas the counter integration gives you a visible front end option where you can see the current state of your counter and maybe edit it as you see fit or when you need to. So this was a brief overview of some of the integrations or helpers that you can use to enhance your automations. They provide a great way for front-end editing or control of your automations without having to dive into the back-end. So there we go, a selection of helpers for you to improve your automations. Make sure you hit subscribe below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.